All right, so like I was like we started last week, we're going to be continuing working on with dividing with fractions. Okay, so the other day we worked with dividing a whole number by a fraction. Now we're going to have two fractions, and we're going to be dividing basically like one fourth divided by one third. Okay, so two fractions together. So over here in the real world link, okay, three students are painting an art mural. The art mural is half painted. Number one says, use the picture after exercise four, divide the painted area into three equal parts. So we go down here, and we're gonna divide this up into three equal parts, just the painted area. So I'm gonna start off by putting a line right here at the edge, okay? So that'll cut us off about halfway through the actual mural. Okay, now we got to divide this area up into three different parts. So I'm going to go about right there and about right here. Close enough. Okay, so now we have those in three equal parts. The next part says place an X over each part of the painted area. Well, we have three parts, so we got to put three X's. So one, two, three. Then it says divide the unpainted area into the same number of parts. So how many parts did we do here on this side? Three. three. So we're going to do three over here. So number three, what fraction of the whole mural has each student painted? So how, how many parts are there total all together now? Six. Six. So that's going to be my denominator. Now, how, what would represent one student here? How would we, re so what did one student paint, basically? How many parts? Just one part. So, one-sixth. So the students, so each student painted one-sixth of the mural. All right, that's how that would be read. So, number four says, one-half divided by three because if you have six or one half and you divide it by three different parts, we got one sixth, which is also true if you do one half times one third equals one sixth. Why did these two work? We have multiplication, we have division here. Why did that work? Because we don't actually divide, just like we talked about the other day, we're multiplying by the reciprocal. Well, we multiplied by the reciprocal by doing 1 over 3. It's, this, it's the reciprocal of 3 over 1. Okay, that's why these are comparable, and that's why they actually work out. Because you're actually multiplying it by the reciprocal, like we did the other day. So, let's go on to the next page. All right, so it says to divide by a fraction... You have to multiply by its reciprocal, just like the other day. Nothing changed. But this time, we have a problem like this. One half divided by one third. Okay, the other day, we had like 10 divided by one third. Okay, and we had a whole number here. Now, the whole number, we had to change it into a fraction. That was our first step the other day. Now, we don't have a whole number. So, we don't have to do anything to that first number. So now you're down to only two steps, okay? So all you're doing now is like Miss Reiner, this is how she uh, talks about, she keeps the same steps every time. So she says copy, so we copy the one half, we change the division to multiplication, and you flip the second fraction. So flip one over three to three over one, just like we did the other day. So all the, the only thing we did differently was we just kept this one half the same. We didn't make it a fraction because it already is a fraction. All right. So one half, we changed it to multiplication and we changed it to the reciprocal. Then you just multiply. What's one times three? Three. What's two times one? Two. Now, can we divide that out evenly or are we going to get a whole number? What's three divided by two? No, you're not going to. So we got to change it into a mixed number. So how many times does two go into three? Once. Once. What are you left with? You keep the half. So it'd be one and one half. Okay. So we're doing the same steps as the other day. You're still multiplying by the reciprocal. You can't actually divide. There's still no division here. Still got to multiply by the reciprocal. 
So let's jump over to page 321. We're going to do a few of these. So number one, we have one eighth divided by one half. So we already have two fractions. We don't have to change anything to be a fraction. We already got them. So I'm going to keep the one eighth the same. That does not change. Just like the other day, the only one you change to the reciprocal is the one, the second one, the one you're dividing by. All right. So then what, what's my next step? Same as the other day, Emily. Change it to multiplication. And then what's our final step here? What do we got to do before we can multiply? Flip the fraction, the second one here, to 2 over 1. Now, you can multiply or simplify before you multiply. We've talked about that in the past. You can do that. You don't have to. You just have to remember simplest form. Don't forget that. So, 1 times 2 is? 2. 8 times 1? 8. Okay, is that in simplest form? No, what can we divide out of both of these? Two. So we divide two by two, we get one. Eight divided by two would be four. One fourth. Okay? Number two, three fourths divided by two thirds. So just like the last one, I keep three fourths the same. It does not change. Our second step is to change this to multiplication. And then we have to change this to the reciprocal. So that would be 3 over 2. And then we just multiply. So what's 3 times 3? Nine. 9. 4 times 2? Eight. 8. Okay, this is an improper fraction, but can we simplify it first? No. Now let's change it back into a mixed number. Yes, you can leave it like this. That does count as an answer. But I want you to get in the habit of putting both. Because eventually they're going to ask you for just the mixed number, not the improper fraction. So how many times does 8 go into 9? One time. How many are you left with? Just once. Or just one, I mean. And then you keep the denominator as 8. 1 and 1 eighth, Or 9 over 8. They mean the same thing. Okay. And let's do one more. Number 4. Okay. 1 sixth divided by 4 over 7. So I'm keeping one sixth the same. What's my next step? What are we going to do now? Change it to multiplication. And then what's our final step before we can actually multiply? Flip it. Flip the second fraction. So 7 over 4. Now we just multiply. So what's 1 times 7? 7. And 6 times 4? 24. Can we simplify that? What number are you going to divide out? Seven's the, what's 7 divided by 3? Is there any number you can divide out? No, so you're done. 7 is a prime number. It's not divisible by anything by itself. Okay? All right, let's go back, and I want you guys to do A, B, and C down at the bottom. So A, B, and C. So all you're doing is dividing these, so work these problems out, the same steps as we've always done, right? So take your time. On 318. A, B, and C. I might have said 317, sorry. Here we go. So letter A, all right? We have one-fourth divided by three-eighths. Okay, who can walk me through this one? All right, Emily, what do we got to do first? Do Keep the one fourth, okay. and you'll change the division to multiplication. All right. And then you'll flip um, three, three over eight to eight over three. Good. Okay, so we keep the one fourth, we change it to multiplication, and then we flip the reciprocal of the second fraction, and now we just multiply. So what's one times eight? Eight. And four times three? Twelve. Twelve. Can that be simplified? Yes, they are both even. So if they're both even, right away, right away you guys know that you can divide a 2 out. Okay, so you can divide a 2 out, I get, or you can divide a 4 out. So once you divide all this way down and simplify it, you should get 2 thirds. 2 over 3. Okay, you got to remember to simplify. Okay, letter B, we have 2 thirds divided by... 
uh, three eighths. Okay, so what do we do now, Stephen? Okay. Change it to multiplication. Okay. Eight over three. Now we just multiply. What's two times eight? Sixteen. Three times three. Nine. Okay. Before we do anything, can we simplify this? No. Okay. So you can leave it like this. That does count. But I want you to get in the habit of putting both. So how many times does nine go into sixteen? Just once. What are we left with? Seven. That should be a nine. So those two answers for that one. All right. And letter C. Okay. Five six divided by one third is Bella. Okay, so we kept the 5, 6, changed it to multiplication, and then flipped the second one. She multiplied it out. She got 15 over 6. Can we simplify this before we do anything else? No. Well, let's think about this. So 15 over 6, okay? Is there any number we can divide out of both of these? Yes, 3. 3. These are both divisible by 3. So you get 5 over 2. Now we can change it into a mixed number which would be two and one half. Both of those work. Now, like I said before, you can simplify before you multiply. It is totally up to you. I suggest doing this, suggest simplifying before you multiply because then you won't forget to simplify at the end. Because when you do this, we look at one and five, Okay, we can't do anything with one and five, but we can take a three out of three and six. So now with three divided by three, that's one. Six divided by three is two. So then you get five times one, five, two times one, two. So you get that five halves from the get-go. Okay, you don't have to take this final step, but it's totally up to you. You just have to remember to put it in simplest form. If you don't, it's going to be considered wrong. Okay, all right, we are going to skip example number two, and we're going to go right into dividing a fraction by a whole number. Okay, so like I said the other day, we did something like this, 10 divided by 5 over 7. And you remember the other day, since this is a whole number, we have to change it into a fraction because we can't, we have another fraction, we can't just start dividing and multiplying without fractions. If you have one, you got to have two. Okay, it's how it works. They go hand in hand. So this time it's going to be read as 5 sevenths divided by 10. Okay, so the first thing you still have to do is to change this to a fraction. So I rewrite 5 sevenths divided by, now what's 10 going to look like as a fraction? 10 over 1. Okay, now we have two fractions. Now we can follow our steps like we have been. So, do I change this first one? No. no, we keep it. So, 5 sevenths. What do I do with the division? Make it, make it multiplication. And then what do I do this second one here? Flip it. Okay, that's what I want you guys to realize. You have to make this a fraction first. Because this is the one being flipped now. Because it's the second one. It's the one we're dividing by. So, that's going to be the reciprocal. Now, we just multiply it out. I'm going to simplify before I multiply those. So 1 and 7, I can't do. What about 5 and 10? Yeah. What number am I going to divide out of both of those? Yeah. Five. Five. 5. 5. So 5 divided by 5 would be 1. 10 divided by 5 would be 2. So now what's 1 times 1? Yeah. 1. What's 7 times 2? 14. And you're done because it's already simplified. Okay. Any questions? All right, let's hop over to page 321. We're going to do number three. All right, number three. Okay, we have three-fourths divided by nine. So, once again, since we have a whole number, my first step here is I have to make this a fraction. So, I just rewrite three-fourths divided by, and then i got to make this nine a fraction. What's that going to look like? What's the 9 going to look like as a fraction? 
Well, you got that backwards. Nine over one. There you go. Now we follow our steps of dividing with a fraction because we can't actually divide by a fraction. So I keep the three fourths. I change the division to multiplication and I flip the second fraction here. So one over nine. Okay, so you can just multiply this out or you can simplify before you multiply. Like I said, I like to simplify before I multiply. So is there anything I can do with three and nine? So yeah, we can divide the three out. So what's three divided by three? One. one. And what's nine divided by three? Three. three. What about one and four? You can divide four by one or one by four? No, one's already done. You can't go any further than one. Okay, so what's one times one? One. What's four times three? Twelve. Twelve. And you're done. Now, if you wouldn't have multiplied or simplified before you multiply, there's nothing wrong with that. You would have got three times one, which is three, and four times nine, which is 36. You just have to remember to simplify this, which it does get down to one over 12. Like I said, I just like doing it here because the numbers are a lot easier to work with. Okay, and they're smaller numbers. All right, let's do number five. So one third divided by eight. So what do we got to do first? What do we got to do first? You have to... We have one third divided by eight. You just do one third and then you'll change the division to multiplication. Are you jumping the gun here? We have a fraction, we have a whole number. What do we got to do first? You have to make it there you go. So we got to make this whole number a fraction. Okay, so one third divided by eight over one. Now we follow the steps of dividing with a fraction. So Emily said we kept one third the same. We changed the division to multiplication. And now we have to change this to the reciprocal. So that would be one over eight. Okay, we can look to see, but if you look one and eight, one and three, there's nothing we can simplify. So we just multiply it out. What's one times that? One. One. And three times eight. 24. So one, 24. Any questions on those? So when you have a whole number, you just have to remember your first step is to change it into a fraction, just like we did the other day. All right, so go ahead and go back to page 319, and I want you to do E, F, and G. E, F, and G. So remember, if you have a whole number, make it a fraction first, then go from there. Okay? So go ahead and get to work. All right, here we go. So letter E, we have eight ninths divided by four. So letter E is the same as the rest of the ones we just completed. So we're gonna keep eight ninths the same. We're gonna keep that division for right now because I gotta make this four a fraction. So it's gonna be four over one, okay? So now we follow those rules. And I'm gonna run out of room, so I'm gonna do it right next to it, I guess. So 8 over 9 stays the same regardless. We change it to multiplication, and then we flip the one or the 4 over 1. So I'm going to go ahead and simplify. So 1 and 9 can't do nothing. So 8 and 4, I can divide a 4 out. So what's 8 divided by 4? 2. And then 4 divided by 4? 1. So what's 2 times 1? 2. And 9 times 1? 9. So two ninths. Okay. Let me delete some of this. Maybe we're just gonna delete it all. Okay, so that one was two ninths. So now letter F. Okay, so we have four fifths divided by eight. So once again, four fifths stays the same. Keep the division for right now. And then we change it to 8 over 1. Okay, what do we got to do now? Emily? Change the division to multiplication. So 4 fifths stays the same. Change it to multiplication. And then what? Then what? And then it would be, you flip the, uh, divide the fraction. So. so we flip that 8 over 1 to 1 over 8. Okay, and once again, I'm going to simplify. So 1 and 5, can we do anything? Now, 
One's all the way simplified down. What about four and eight? Yeah, we take four out. What about what's four divided by four? One. And eight divided by four? Two. So then what's one times one? One. What am I doing? So then what's five times two? What? Oh, I thought you said nine. I was like, what? So one tenth, right? Any questions on E and F? And letter or letter G here. So once again, 12 over 13 stays the same. Division sign stays the same for now because we got to make that four into a fraction. Now, what do we do? What are our steps now? So we got to multiply by 1 over 4. Now, once again, 1 and 13, can I simplify anything? No. What about 12 and 4? Yeah, I can take a 4 out. What's 12 divided by 4? 3. Three. And 4 divided by 4? 1. 3 times 1? And 13 times 1. Any questions on those? Okay, so you got to follow the same rules every time. Okay, you're not actually dividing with fractions. You're changing it to multiplication and multiplying it by the reciprocal. So your homework for today, there's two different IXLs. The first one, 6L2. This one is all about reciprocals. Okay, the thing is, the only... The only one you're going to see that's differently than what we haven't seen so far, okay, is you're going to get this, and they want you to find the reciprocal of this. So, like, one and one-half. They want you to find the reciprocal of this. All right. Because this is a mixed number, you have to make it an improper fraction first. So, remember, you take one time the whole number times the denominator, so one times two, and then add the numerator. So, what's one times two? Plus one. So we get three over two. Now you can find the reciprocal. So what would be the reciprocal of this? Two over three. So you have to change it to this first, then make it the reciprocal, all right? So if you get a question like that, just be prepared. And then the next one is 6L5. And that's the dividing fractions like what we just did today. Okay, you should have more than enough time to finish both of them in class. This one should go really, really fast. The reciprocal one because all you're doing is flipping a fraction okay so go ahead and get to work i give you the rest of the time in class to do this and then you you can work on other homework i would prefer you do alex because that's going to be due again this week too yeah just grab one hey those those i know because last week i didn't because the way we set it up it just didn't work out so i didn't actually count those last week you always have to do 10. Uh, yeah. Okay, so go ahead and take your time. You got plenty of it. You're doing 6L2, 6L5. 